So, you want to draw chibis? Maybe you've seen how popular they are for merch. Maybe you just think they're really cute. Or maybe you have some other reason entirely. Okay, so this isn't going to be a comprehensive guide, but it might serve as a useful starting point or inspiration for finding your own personal chibi style. Stop. Along with some tips and tricks that you can use to draw chibi in different poses or angles. So, when it comes to determining a chibi style, the most important and noticeable thing is the proportions that you choose. And I say you choose because the thing with chibis is that since they're not exactly humans, they are heavily stylized, you're kind of free to do whatever you want here. Proportions are useful even for drawing non-chibis. A very useful unit of measurement is the head. A typical chibi is basically between two heads tall to three heads tall, usually somewhere in between. But as you can see here from my examples, you can get pretty crazy with the shapes, with how wide the head is, all sorts of things, yep. How do you choose proportions? Well, that depends on how you want it to look. There's a lot of things to think about when you're drawing chibis, but adjusting the head to body ratio is one of the things that will affect the feel of your chibi the most. The average human, let me find a Loomis, example of Loomis here, will probably be around seven and a half heads. Ooh, I can't show this on Twitch because Loomis shows pee pee. Typical human being is about seven and a half heads tall. Artists like to use eight heads, including me. I just like eight heads because it's nice and divisible, and I can just divide things out and find important landmarks, like for example, the crotch, or the elbows, or the knees, or something like that, right? So for chibis, a good starting point is to make it about two heads tall, as you see right here. You can probably go up to three heads tall, but if you go any higher than that, it'll start feeling a little bit less like a chibi and more like a toddler. But it's really up to you. You can make a chibi that's 20 heads tall. No one's stopping you. Have fun. The crotch is usually about halfway down the body in any chibi. You can make it a little lower if you want, or a little higher if you want them to have longer legs, but this is a reasonable starting point. The elbow is usually another halfway down like that, about at the waist area, okay? So here, approximately. Again, you can play with this. And same-ish with the knees. So it's not only the head to body ratio you can play with, uh, there are some other things you can play with, like for example, the width of the head, as you can see here. This head is about the same width as the body. This one is twice the slight length of the body. You can change the feeling of your chibi a lot just by taking, taking your head and stretching it out. It gives a different feeling, right? Or you can stretch it this way. Play around. See what you like. Another thing you can mess with is the size of the hands. This chibi has these itty bitty little tiny hands, whereas this one has really big ones. If I want to give it a sonic vibe, yeah, giant mittens then, why not? and giant sonic shoes. Whatever you like. Again, a different feeling. You can also mess with the shoulder to hip ratio. Okay, I like to draw chibis that kind of flare out a little bit at a hip with really small shoulders because it gives it that cute toddler look. But there is absolutely nothing stopping you from making the shoulders a little wider. Actually, I should probably just do this. And make it more making it more squarish. That's also absolutely fine. This might give it a more of a mature feeling if you don't want your chibi to feel more too childish. Yeah? So on the face, a couple things you can think about is the height of the eyes. I'll use this one over here as an example. Usually on a regular human head, the eyes are halfway down the head. On a chibi, they're typically a little bit lower because it gives it a cuter childlike vibe, but you can move it back up if you want. That's no, no nothing wrong with that. Make your chibi look a little bit more mature. Or you can go kind of really low down, like I did on this one. You can make the eyes like taller. You can make the eyes more round. You can make the eyes more wider. That's also something you can play with. You can mess with the distance between the eyes. For a typical human, there's usually one eye width between uh, the two eyes. But I've made them all a little bit wider. I think typically an anime is a bit wider than that. But you can go full alien vibes if you feel like it. Nothing's stopping you. As for ears, typically ears attach at this at the eye line okay so you see this attachment point of the ears right here typically they will attach where the eyes are okay you can again play with this but it's a good starting point you can also play with size of the nose you can play with the size of the mouth maybe just a little dot here and a big nose 
It's up to you. Some chibis don't even have noses, as in, for me, I usually don't draw noses on my chibis, so, uh... On chibis, the nose is strictly optional, actually. <laughs> okay, moving on to details. Now that you've filled in and decided what your proportions are, it's time to add details. So these two heads actually have exactly the same proportions, but they feel different because I've chosen to completely yassify one of them. Personally, I feel like you can draw eyes how you normally would on a chibi and it'll probably look fine. Unless you do hyper-realism and then it might look a little funny, but it's up to you. It depends on what kind of feeling you want, right? For hands, uh, well, typically I do this thing where I just draw like a little rounded tube and then just stick five little nubbins on it and I kind of call it a day. Good enough. The hands are- you. I usually draw hands really small on a chibi, so they're not really visible. You, but you can stick full-on anatomical hands on them if you want. Maybe just a little mitten, or if you're feeling it, which is my new favorite way of doing it, just do a circle and go full Animal Crossing style. So all of these tips are pretty cool and all, but uh, what if you want to draw a chibi from a different angle that isn't just straight on standing there? Well, that's where you have to learn a little bit of construction because the chibis are based off real humans. So the actual best way of learning how to draw chibis from every angle is to learn how to draw a real body. And then you learn all the anatomy. Then you learn all the muscles. Well, I'm a... Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, maybe. Okay, I'm only kind of kidding because that's actually the best way to learn how to draw chibis. If you can draw a fully anat anatomical, perfectly accurate human being, you'll find that stylizing it and turning it into a chibi is not that difficult for you. When looking at a chibi's head, there here are some key anatomical landmarks to consider. Obviously, we have the eyes, we have the nose, or lack thereof, the mouth, and the ears, okay? But uh, two more important landmarks, anatomical landmarks, are over here. You can see it most clearly in the three-quarter view, the brow bone. If you kind of feel your eyebrows, you can, it kind of protrudes in front of your eyes, right? Over here. So this is the brow bone, and this is the cheekbone. The cheekbone also protrudes outwards a little bit. Which is why when you're drawing three-quarters views of any head, really, not just chibis, in any angle, you get that characteristic kind of like, it goes out, and then in, and then out again. Brow bone, eye socket, cheekbone. The ears are usually at about the eye line. When you're drawing a side view, t usually you can kind of cut this in half. Uh, I kind of put them a little bit too far back, actually, but that's okay. And the ear will be about halfway down the side of the head. So this all might be kind of a lot to remember, but I find that a good way to help me remember these details is to just copy someone, right? You can copy this chart if you want. Just copy the anatomical chart and try to kind of memorize the details with your muscle memory. Just have your hand remember them instead of your brain necessarily. And you might want to copy it a few times if that's helpful, but that's one way of learning how to draw head angles. That's basically how I do it anyway. There might be a smarter way of doing it, but I'm not the smartest. So the same applies to the body, okay? I've also done a quick body rotation chart. For the body, we can keep it pretty simple. Typically, even for regular human beings, I like to split the body into a rib cage, which I just draw as a cube or a flattened rectangular prism, the pelvis, which is basically the same thing. And for chibis, the arms, I tend to simplify them. So a, a series of bendy tubes. If you don't want them to, chibis don't even have to have elbows. You could just make them all curved. That's totally okay. So notice that all of these over here, they are uh, 3D shapes. So if you are able to draw 3D shapes and rotate them in your head, you will be able to construct a lot of things from different angles. If you find that you have a bit of trouble drawing uh, rotating boxes, well, there may or may not be another video on my channel that involves boxes, but I don't know. Check it out for yourself. Remember all that stuff I said about landmarks and the head and stuff? If you really want to, you can just ignore them, right? Take a look at Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, yeah, yada, yada, brow bone, etc, etc, and stuff. But if we look at Animal Crossing style, 
Yeah, whatever. If you don't want it, just make it a sphere. <laughs> if you don't feel like it, it's all up to you. It's chibis. You can draw whatever details you like. I like to include the brow bone and the cheekbone and stuff. If you don't want to, leave them out. No one's stopping you. If you want to draw them in different poses, also remember that if you're really good, you can get away with some fancy perspective tricks. But usually, since chibis have these teeny little arms and stuff, it's basically impossible for them to do certain poses. Unless the chibi can stretch their arms, they're not holding, they're not able to reach the top of their head. I drew them just to demonstrate that chibis just can't do certain poses. They just can't. Hey, how do I draw chibis hugging? The answer is, if their head is too big, they can't. Chibis cannot hug. It's the saddest thing. They don't know love. If there is a particular chibi style you like, you can always go that you can always like, take it and then just sort of trace over it. All right. Although while you're doing that, I would heavily encourage you to actually trace the 3D forms if you can. It's tricky at first if you're not used to it. Instead of just tracing the 2D shapes because that will probably not help you understand too much other than the basic proportions. Like if you just make the body a square and the pelvis also a square and the legs rectangles, I suppose you might be able to learn some shape language from it, but I feel like it's a lot more useful to try to understand the 3D form instead. So I hope you can see the difference between these two breakdowns, right? But yeah, but in doing this, you can, if there's a chibi style you really, really like, this will help you understand what you like about them. For instance, this one definitely doesn't do the thing where I make, I tend to make the shoulders narrower than the hips, but this one, or and that one, doesn't do it, and so forth. Well, now you finish your sketch, congratulations! Add your lines, add your coloring. Yeah, I could go over this, but I think there's a lot to go over when it comes to adding detail and color and line work, so that's gonna be an entire other video. If you're interested in it, you know, let me know in the comments, hey. <laughs> the most important thing about drawing chibis is to have fun. Yippee! Some people get so fixated on learning that they forget to have fun. I don't know if this was clear, but when it comes to drawing chibis, you can get a lot looser with the anatomy. It doesn't have to be completely accurate all the time, so you can draw the hands as circles if the hands stress you out, so just have fun. I hope you enjoyed the video! It's always so awkward. Do I say like, comment, subscribe now? Oh, I don't know.